Hi everyone, welcome to Lincoln Park Zoo. We're so glad you're joining us. On Stay Tuned to the Zoo today, we are gonna talk a little bit about how some animals use different types of camouflage. Together, we'll learn what makes these animals excellent at hiding. Now, many of you have probably heard the word camouflage before, and in the natural world, this often means animals who use coloration, illumination, and concealing features in order to disguise themselves as something else or just be harder to see in their natural environments. Not only is this helpful to prey species in order to not be spotted by their predators, but it's also incredibly important for predators in order to remain unseen while trying to capture their next meal. Let's take a look at some examples of these animals who live right here at Lincoln Park Zoo. Probably one of the best known types of camouflage is called concealing coloration. This is when an animal is going to blend into a background of the same color. Can you think of any animals who might do this? I'm sure you came up with lots of creative examples. Some of the first animals that pop into my mind are going to be polar bears in the Arctic, that white fur against the white snow and ice, or different types of snakes that might blend into their natural environment. In fact, there are several residents in Regenstein's Small Mammal Reptile House who use concealing coloration to blend in perfectly with their habitats. The first resident we're gonna take a look at is the West African Gaboon Viper. As the name suggests, they do live in West Africa in rainforest habitats. They're a large venomous snake with two inch long fangs, making them incredible predators. Now snakes who are terrestrial, like the West African Gaboon Viper, normally spend most of their time on the ground. That's what terrestrial means. They're going to hunt different types of animals who also live on the forest floor, like small rodents. That means that that concealing coloration or blending into their environment is critically important to catching their next meal. If you look closely at the West African Gaboon Viper, you'll see intricate patterns of browns, grays, and greens. Those colors, you can imagine, are the same colors as the leaf litter that's on the rainforest floor. They have patterns of triangles and rectangles, and that mixed with the lines of the shadows of leaves and branches on the forest floor completely conceals their shape. That makes them incredibly difficult to find and also an excellent predator. Another resident of the Regenstein Small Mammal Reptile House is the Green Tree Python. Now this snake is gonna have a few things in common with the West African Gaboon Viper, and it's going to differ in a few ways. First and foremost, they live all the way across the world in northeastern Australia and New Guinea. Also, what makes them different is they're an arboreal species, meaning that they spend most of their lives way up in the tops of trees. Because they live in two different types of habitats, they also are going to eat different types of food. Instead of small rodents, oftentimes the green tree python is going to eat things like small birds or lizards that live up in the treetops with them. You can imagine this is where it leads into some of the adaptations that these two snakes have in common, the need to conceal themselves in order to ambush their predators and capture their next meal. They are a vibrant green color and with speckles of yellow and white, which create some stripes, this helps them blend in perfectly amongst the leaves and treetops. Both of these snakes are incredible predators and excellent examples of concealing coloration. Another type of camouflage is called disruptive coloration. This is essentially the complete opposite of concealing coloration. It's often used by animals with spot or stripe patterns on their fur, feathers, or scales. Now close your eyes for one moment and imagine with me an animal with stripes. What did you think of? The first animal that popped into my mind was a zebra, known for their characteristic black and white stripes. You may have thought of other animals with stripes too, like a tiger or even snakes. Now zebras are going to use their special camouflage adaptation in a very specific way since they are prey species they're going to use it to avoid predation. Zebras live in sub-Saharan African habitats, all sorts of different areas, even savannas where we normally see them depicted. As an herbivore, they're going to live in a large group and sometimes are susceptible to predation from the large carnivores of Africa, like lions, leopards, or hyenas. 
This is especially true if one single zebra is alone, if it's sick, or if it's young and small. This is where their camouflage comes in handy. You may be wondering to yourself, how in the world does this black and white stripe pattern help protect them from predators? Now, while a zebra may look very stark in contrast to their brown and green environment, when they're standing in a herd of zebra, that is going to be a very different story. That head to toe distinctive black and white stripe is going to blend perfectly in to the large group of zebras, making it incredibly difficult to see if there's one zebra or many. It creates the illusion that there's a large black and white object instead of one single zebra, which can deter predators like lions or leopards from singling out one single zebra as their meal. Zebras are an incredible example of disruptive coloration and safety in numbers. While there are other types of camouflage, we have time for one more example. This type of camouflage is a coloration tactic called counter shading. This is going to be seen on animals who have a darker top or backside than their underside or belly. Now you're gonna often see this in animals like sharks, birds of prey like hawks or falcons, and African penguins. African penguins are known for their tuxedo-like coloration. They have those black feathers on their backs, and then they have a nice crisp white feather coloration on their bellies. What you might not know about African penguins is that they are incredible ocean predators, meaning that they spend much of their lives in the ocean searching for food and avoiding predators. Their camouflage, that counter shading, helps them to do both of those things. In terms of being a prey species to other large carnivores in the ocean, like seals or sharks, when you are above a penguin looking down, that black feather coloration is going to blend into the dark ocean waters below. Now conversely, if you were to be below a penguin looking up at that lighter colored belly, it's going to blend right into the lighter colors of the water above. Not only does that conceal them from those seals and sharks, it also conceals them so that they can maintain being unseen in the ocean water while they search for fish. We hope you learned a little bit more about the wild world of camouflage and how different animals, prey and predatory species alike, both use these different types of camouflage like concealing coloration, disruptive coloration, and counter shading to their advantage in their habitats. Now that you're a camouflage expert too, we hope that you teach your friends and family about the wild world of what makes these animals excellent at hiding. Now that we learned about how animals camouflage in their environment, let's use those skills that we've just learned about all the different types of camouflage and make a animal camouflaging in a scene of our own. First, what you're gonna wanna do is get some paper, maybe some markers, something else that you're gonna to wanna to be able to draw and color with, and then decide what animal you wanna draw. I've decided I'm gonna draw a chameleon and I'm gonna put it in a jungle scene. So I'm gonna start out sketching my chameleon with gray. Now that I have my chameleon on my log, it's time to start camouflaging him in his environment.
There, now my chameleon is camouflaged in his jungle environment. Hopefully you, your picture turned out pretty good too. Thanks for joining, stay tuned to the zoo. Subscribe for new videos every Tuesday and Thursday.